Aloha. I'm Dr. Irmina Van Dyken from Out of the Doldrums. Imagine if the answer to alleviating depression was hidden in your kitchen spice drawer. Today, we're exploring the fascinating world of saffron, a spice so precious it's called red gold. Could this tiny stigma be the key to brighter moods? Saffron, scientifically known as Crocus sativus, belongs to the iris family and it's renowned for its culinary and medicinal uses due to its distinct taste, aroma, and coloring capabilities. The highly prized red gold is primarily produced in Iran, India, Afghanistan, Greece, Morocco, and Italy. Its stunning lilac purple flowers yield the prized saffron stigmas, which are the most valuable parts of the plant. These stigmas are meticulously handpicked and dried. Here's a fascinating fact. It takes up to 200,000 flowers just to produce one kilogram of saffron, making it one of the most expensive spices in the world, sometimes reaching up to $11,000 per kilogram. These stigmas are so valuable because they are rich in over 150 bioactive compounds, including carotenoids like crocin and crocetin, and terpenes such as picocrocin and safranol. Saffron, treasured since the 12th century BC, was meticulously hand harvested from the vibrant blooms at dawn, ensuring the preservation of its aromatic and healing properties. Cultures like the Egyptians, Romans, and Greeks revered it, and it remains central to Persian, Chinese, and Ayurvedic medicine today. Its uses are extensive, from easing pain and boosting vitality to enhancing dishes with its unique flavor. Saffron also finds its way into cosmetics, enriching skin tones and imparting color to textiles. Recently, saffron has consistently been shown to have benefits for depression. In this video, we will review the scientific research into why this is the case, and we'll discuss strategies and dosages to use saffron for depression. Depression, or major depressive disorder, is a real problem in the world today. It's one of the most commonly diagnosed psychological disorders. Approximately one in five adults report experiencing one episode of depression in their lifetime, with women being twice as likely to develop depression. It's a serious condition that impacts many aspects of life, but it's something that can and should be addressed with proper support and treatment. And depression isn't just about feeling down. It's a complex condition, and it's linked to chemical changes in the brain. Over time, it can actually make parts of your brain age faster and increase the risk of physical illness related to aging. At the microscopic level, depression is linked to the loss of brain cells, less new brain cell growth, less flexibility in brain connections, and more inflammation within the brain. This can make the brain less able to handle stress or adapt to new situations. Depression can also show up alongside other physical diseases, like infectious diseases or as a reaction to certain medications. It can even be triggered by long-term stress, chronic pain, unhealthy lifestyles, environmental pollution, or having a hard time adjusting to big life changes or cultural shifts. Depression isn't just tough on individuals, it's a major challenge for economies around the world. It's one of the most widespread mental health issues we face today, impacting millions globally and costing billions in healthcare and lost productivity. Back in 2017, around 163 million people that's 2% of everyone on the planet, was dealing with major depressive disorder. Fast forward to today, and it's estimated that over 260 million people worldwide are affected, with around 40 million in Europe alone. In the United States, it's estimated that there's around 21 million adults who experienced at least one major depressive episode in the past year. This figure represents about 8.3% of all U.S. adults. This highlights a significant portion of the population dealing with the challenging condition, reflecting the widespread impacts of depression across various demographics. Besides traditional treatments like psychotherapy and medication, there's a growing interest in using plant-based compounds for depression. 
These natural substances, known as phytochemicals, are being explored for their potential to prevent and treat mental health conditions, including brain disorders and depression. This approach is part of a broader strategy to support mental health with a variety of therapeutic options. One notable example is saffron, known for its medicinal properties and is currently under clinical trials for its potential benefits in treating depression. The saffron crocus is packed with bioactive substances. Its dried stigmas feature over 150 volatile components, primarily terpenes and their esters. Beyond the stigmas, the corm, leaves, tepals, and flowers of the plant are rich in various bioactive compounds, such as anthocyanins, carotenoids, phenolic compounds, flavonoids, saponins, and terpenoids. These elements highlight the plant's significant pharmacological potential, making it a valuable subject for scientific research. As we discussed earlier, saffron is commonly used in Asian and Middle Eastern traditional medicine. It's used to combat stress, trauma, and anxiety, and also acts as an anticonvulsant and memory enhancer. Additionally, it helps alleviate chronic fatigue, depression, and inflammation. The medicinal use of this plant dates back to the 6th century BC, with its benefits confirmed by both modern animal studies and human clinical research. In the realm of natural antidepressants, saffron, or crocus sativus, stands out due to its potent bioactive compounds like safranol, crocin, crocetin, and precrocrocin. These substances have been extensively researched for their therapeutic properties. Saffron is particularly rich in crocin, which accounts for about 20 to 30 percent of its dry weight. Research has highlighted its potential in pharmaceutical applications, showing promising results in alleviating depression symptoms, supporting its use in both traditional and modern medicine settings. So how exactly does saffron work as an antidepressant? The antidepressant mechanisms are actually quite complex and they involve its key components, crocin and safranol. Following consumption, some of these compounds are transformed within the gastrointestinal tract, and the main compound found in the blood seems to be crocetin. Crocin is particularly effective in blocking the reuptake of neurotransmitters such as noradrenaline and dopamine, which helps elevate mood. Safranol targets serotonin reuptake, another crucial pathway for mood regulation. This is a really important pathway. Many common antidepressants like fluoxetine or Prozac work by blocking serotonin reuptake. So they kind of work the same way. Additionally, both the crocin and safranol compounds interact with GABA receptors and enhance neurotrophic factors like BDNF or brain-derived neurotrophic factor. This combination of actions not only helps alleviate depression by maintaining higher neurotransmitter levels, but also supports overall brain health and neural function. So let's review some of the research, shall we? Let's start with this systemic review and meta-analysis published in the journal Nutrition Reviews in 2019. It focused on assessing the impact of saffron supplementation on symptoms of depression and anxiety. It included a total of 23 randomized controlled trials and used rigorous guidelines for data extraction and risk assessment. Most studies used a dose of 30 milligrams per day of saffron. 10 studies used the stigma of saffron, four studies used saffron petals, three used crocin only, and the remaining studies used either a whole powder or they didn't provide further details. So what did the researchers find? They found significant positive effects of saffron used both alone as a depression treatment as well as together with conventional antidepressants in reducing depressive and anxiety symptoms compared to placebo. In the studies reviewed, saffron had a substantial positive impact on both depression and anxiety. The effect size, which measures the strength of the treatment's effect, was quite large. This means that saffron significantly reduced symptoms of both conditions compared to placebo, indicating a strong and meaningful improvement for those taking saffron. The meta-analysis also highlighted that while saffron's benefits are promising, the evidence is limited by potential publication bias and a lack of studies from diverse geographical regions. Most of the included studies were conducted by the same research group out of Iran. 
This makes sense, as Iran is the world's largest producer and user of saffron, but it could affect the generalizability of the findings. Therefore, the authors recommend further large-scale, diverse clinical trials to validate these results and fully establish saffron's efficacy and safety profile for treating mood disorders. Okay, so now that we know saffron is promising, what dose should be considered? Most studies use a dose of 15 milligrams of saffron twice daily, which is about two threads of saffron twice a day. While higher doses have been used, there is no clear benefit to this, and there may be an increased risk of side effects. And a word of warning, doses above five grams or 5,000 milligrams are considered toxic and doses above 20 grams, 20,000 milligrams, may be lethal. Again though, to put it in perspective, to ingest a dose of above five grams, you'd need to ingest more than 750 saffron threads. This would not only be difficult to do, but it would cost a lot, anywhere from 50 to $150. So all in all, a typical dose of 15 milligrams twice daily or two saffron threads twice daily would be a good dosage. What about side effects? Saffron is typically very well tolerated, but there are some side effects seen. Common side effects of saffron include nausea, changes in appetite, dry mouth, headaches, anxiety, and drowsiness. At very high doses, between 1,200 and 2,000 milligrams, saffron can cause severe symptoms like vomiting, diarrhea, and bleeding. Additionally, taking normal doses of isolated crocin, an active component in saffron, may increase serum creatinine levels, suggesting a potential risk to kidney health. Lastly, saffron might be risky during pregnancy. In animal studies, high doses of saffron and its primary active components, crocin, saffronol, and crocetin, have caused fetal malformations, though these effects weren't seen at lower pharmacological real-life doses. Additionally, a study observing humans noted that women who were exposed to high amounts of saffron during its harvest experienced a greater incidence of miscarriage, potentially because of its effects on stimulating uterine contractions and causing bleeding. So because of this, I would recommend caution in pregnancy. Moving on, there are some worries about the quality of saffron supplements. The key ingredients in saffron are delicate and they can be affected by light, air, and heat. Also, the methods used to grow, pick, and process saffron can change its chemical makeup. Because saffron is so valuable, it has been often mixed with other substances to increase profits. These issues can cause inconsistencies in the strength and type of active compounds in saffron supplements, which might affect how they work. Opting for supplements that have been tested by independent third parties can help verify their quality. All right, it's a wrap. As we've explored today, saffron is more than just a spice to brighten up our dishes. It might also light up our moods. And it doesn't take much, just two threads twice daily. The studies we discussed show promising results for saffron in alleviating symptoms of depression and anxiety, thanks to its potent compounds like crocin and saffronol. But as with any supplement, quality and dosage are key, and it's crucial to approach saffron with caution, especially for pregnant women. What are your thoughts on using natural supplements like saffron for mental health? Have you or someone you know tried it? Share your experiences and any questions in the comments below. Let's get this conversation started. And if you found this video enlightening, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for more updates on how natural remedies can support our well-being. As always, cherish your health and aloha.